And when are we seeing that rain and strong winds in Georgia and South Carolina? That would be later in the weekend, uh, perhaps Saturday or, or even into Sunday. So, but the immediate threat is right now. And the immediate threat is in southwestern Florida. But what about for the rest of Florida? When will they be seeing Hurricane Ian? Unfortunately, the entire peninsula is dealing with this storm. Uh, we've got tornadic activity in the southern part of the state, uh, into the central state part of the state. And I think that will continue as these ran, rain bands spiral on. Of course, we have the wind, rain, and storm surge in the western region from Tampa Bay uh, down to uh, parts of Bradenton, and Sarasota, and Fort Myers. And so this is a storm that the majority of the peninsula of Florida is going to be dealing with from today, Wednesday, through about Friday. And that, that's a, a terrifying prospect. That's a long time. And we saw Hurricane Ian rip through Cuba yesterday. Residents in Cuba called the devastation, quote, reportedly ap apocalyptic. And there was there's widespread power outages. How does that devastation compare to what Floridians could potentially see once the storm makes landfall there. Well, I'm glad to hear that you mentioned Cuba because we often forget about the, these islands that get hit by these storms before they make it to the U.S. And I certainly would have expected significant damage in Cuba. And you also have a more vulnerable population to uh, uh, in terms of socioeconomic uh, means and capacity as well. But even here in the United States and parts of Florida, I don't care what kind of economic means you have. They can't withstand 155 mile per hour winds and 16 to 18 feet storm surge. That's going to pretty much do damage to anything in its path. Uh, that's why I hope people uh, heed the warnings and have gotten out of those barrier islands or those really low lying coastal areas. Uh, this is not a storm to sort of say, well, I've ridden out this storm type of storm before. Probably haven't seen this type of storm storm before. And so that normalcy bias or optimism bias that people often exhibit just doesn't apply. Uh, if you think back to 2017 with Hurricane Harvey in, in Houston, uh, that storm caused 50 inches of rainfall over a span of about three to five days. And people said, well, we, we thought we'd be okay. We get rain and flooding in Houston all of the time. Well, that's true, but you don't get that type of rain and flooding. It's an anomaly event. And so that's what I'm trying to get people to understand. Look, we're in a situation where uh, these waters in the Gulf of Mexico are extremely warm. We're seeing storms rapidly intensify with more frequency. That means they get stronger over a shorter period of time. There are likely some links to climate warming in there. And so we have to be prepared for this new generation of hurricanes and people have to change the way they react to them.